Greetings, greetings. Hey, hey, hey. This is Copy Who in 4K. I am your host, Paul the Producer. Sporting somewhat of a different look today. Can you dig it? Will you dig it? Because frankly, I've never shown you my ears before. These are my naked ears. And I've been sitting here self-conscious. Right before beginning, I was like, maybe I won't go with the hat. Maybe I should put on my beanie again. Maybe this will be easier on my ears. Like, because the, the beanie compresses my ears down. So maybe I'll feel looser. I don't know. But I'm self-conscious, as usual. Because I'm just not, I'm not a perfect, good-looking young man anymore. Get into character really soon, really early here. You know what I noticed, though? The beanie pushes my earplugs into my ears a little more so they're a little more quiet than I'm accustomed to oh yeah I just so I turned the volume up on them right now hi everyone I kava therefore I am <laughs> I kratom therefore I am <laughs> I went to uh, garage sales this morning I didn't find shit for anything I wanted some guy asked me like hey are you looking for anything in particular and I'm like no, I just kind of like bargains, and you never know. Well, I'm like, maybe something will fit into my life. And he's like, oh, yeah, come on, get something here. And I'm like, well, the more things you have, the more uh, problems you have. The more stuff you have, the more headaches you have. But, you know, I didn't buy anything. I checked out two uh, neighborhood sales. Oy. And later on, to the Cob when I go to the Cava bar, I might actually check out one more neighborhood on the way, just kind of like drive by drive through one particular neighborhood and see if there's anything in there that I want, because you never know. I'm doing this show a little early today. I got up, uh, I woke up early today, so I'm preserving my energy, or rather I'm putting my rested energy into this earlier so that I'm not more tired when I come to it later. So I had an early lunch. I ate my, it sounds ridiculous, but I ate my lunch like at, starting at around 10 a.m., Yep, it was a san it was a good sandwich, turkey sandwich that I bought from Natural Grocers, and um, darn those Natural Grocer people! Let me tell you, I'm so irritated because, like, after going to the garage sales, I had to pee, and so I went through the whole grocery store piling stuff up into my um, cart, and then I go to the bathroom, and I'm thinking I'll just be able to go in and pee, but nope, modern world, modern effing world, they put a stupid ass whatchamacallit, on the door, an electric lock, and you need a key code, and there's a sign that says, ask an employee for a key code to get into the bathroom. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Why? Why is this the reality we live in now? All the way up in a northern suburb of Colorado, this is what they do, and I think that's so annoying and lame that they do that. And so I, it's, so I go and ask a, an employee, and I said, hey, what's the bathroom number? And he tells me a six-digit number. And I'm like, I'm not going to remember that number. So he writes it down in a notebook he has. He tears it off, and he gives it to me here. So if you're up in North Glen today, and you need to pee, <laughs> oh, this sucks, man. I'm so blind as fuck. Shit. I feel so old. I used to have the most amazing eyesight before fucking steroids. Uh, <laughs> not jabbing them into my arm for muscle, but like to clear up skin problems I have. And they all like the steroid is bad for the eyes when it leaks down into the eyeballs and I went blind. So one eight seven five seven four. Once again, if you want to pee in the men's room and natural grocers in North Glen, one eight seven five seven four. Damn you people! Ah! Now I go back into character here. All right, that is the first thing I wanted to talk about. It's like, why do you have to have an obstacle for people to piss? Why can't a civilized fucking society exist where you where we can have bathrooms and people are nasty? And I have problems with guys in bathrooms, okay? I go into churches where people are supposed to care about others and have have manners and decorum and and it's like guys walk in and their dick is a freaking fire hose. They're like pissing all over everything. I have seen Shit on the walls that looks like some guy aimed his ass at the wall like a cannon as a joke and just is like, <laughs> like all over the place. I'm not even joking, you know? So I'll tell you what, any woman who wants to be a man to be in that environment, that should make you think twice. You want to be in that environment where men shit all over the walls and piss all over everything? 
And I'm a very considerate guy when I go into these bathrooms. I wipe the toilet down if I make any mess on it. I flush the toilet when I'm done. What is up with guys and not being able to flush? I go into bathrooms and it's like, dudes, really? Really, guys? You, you just leave your shit pile there in the bathroom for someone else to look at and see. Is that a joke? It happens in churches, too. It's like, flush the toilet. I am a little bit off today. It's like, I'm being very strange today. Can you deal with moi? I can deal with moi. Can you deal with moi? Everyone who can't deal with moi can just uh, suck a maw, whatever that is. I don't know. It rhymed. That's what that was. That rhymed. Coming to the next item on my list. Oh, it's, uh, I think I remember what it is. Rene Descartes is turning over in his grave. That was from when I said, I kava, therefore I am. Rene Descartes like, no, no, I think therefore I am is how it goes. I'm offended, therefore I am, is what I read in the parasitic mind. I still have that sitting over here because sometimes I want to wave it in your face when people are crazy. Maybe the fucking locked bathroom and natural grocers is a product of the parasitic mind virus. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's a product of mind rape. Be all that as it may. Moving right along, I'm still reading David Rockefeller's um, memoirs. And they are very interesting. Some of the things he talks about are exceptionally interesting. Um, like, it's just, um, you know... It's a window in time to see how people lived in a different era. And I don't get evil vibes when I'm listening to him. But then he did mention Fabian Socialism, and I was like, uh-oh. And I know it's going to get weird when we get more into his business life later on. Maybe I'll have some things to say uh, about it that are uh, more critical of the family thus far. Thus far, what's portrayed in here, I don't find a lot to be critical about. But he was talking today, what I was reading about in this chapter was how he went to uh, uh, just a handful of things I'll mention and I'll move on. But they are interesting. So I hope you can deal, okay? David Rockefeller has a big nose. I'll start out with that. Do you see his nose on there? It's probably not in focus. Um, poor David Rockefeller and his nose. Uh, what I want to say about David Rockefeller in this particular chapter is he went to Harvard and I was identifying with some of what he was saying about feeling socially awkward there at first because he graduated high school early, went to Harvard at 17. So all of his contemporaries were like a year older than he was. And sometimes I, I, I just get feeling out of place socially at a young age. I didn't feel like I finally arrived to feeling cool around people until I was 21. And it's a sad thing, actually, when, you, when you're in that kind of environment. But Harvard in those days seemed like probably a very good place. Unlike now, it's like a liberal cesspool. And um, I'm not too fond of the fact that it's a liberal cesspool. Okay, and so, you know, uh, other things. He There was this interesting story he told about how he spent a summer in Germany during the reign of Hitler. And so he went to Germany twice and he saw these remarkable changes taking place. One was a summer studying German in Germany. And he, he actually has a picture in his book he took of when Hitler was walking in front of him in a parade. I thought that was interesting. And also what he recounted as far as a certain foreboding that he and his friend had when they later went there a few years later as young adults and took a drive through Germany. I found this interesting because he said it got a lot more aggressive, like the the German Reich, whatever you call it. Nazism got a lot more aggressive at that time when he returned, and there was some pretty strange stuff going on. I thought it was interesting, though, because he went on. He he remarked how he went on this driving tour of Europe all over with his buddy, and um, and the unique thing was he took a boat over to Europe, and you think, okay, so he bought a car over there, he rented a car, whatever. I don't know what they did in those days, and then they actually took a Model T Ford over in the hull of the fucking boat. And so you must have to be super wealthy in order to like travel to Europe and take your car with you. But that's what he did. And I was like, that's kind of fascinating. And the last thing I will bring up about this that I thought was interesting before I move on is his father at some point to avoid uh, his kids 
losing the bulk of their wealth to taxes to the government and stuff. He put money in trusts for their kids. So I think it was either 1930 or 1935. He put $16 million in a trust for all of his kids. He later, uh, it was interesting because he he wanted to teach his children um, to learn to manage money without having a ton of it dumped on them all at once when they were young and naive about it. So he would slightly increase the amount of money he gave them. But the interesting thing about $16 million in 1930-ish, when it was, 1935-ish, around there, I looked up how much is it on Google, and it told me it's like over $350 million in today's purchasing power, and I was like, whoa, that is a shitload of money for Dad just to be like, here you go. But he did seem to manage it wisely the way he gave it to his kids and and required that they reach a certain age and stage before it was given out to them in unlimited quantities. Very wise. But I was just like, oh, my God, $350 million. And it sounds like... um, And so when I hear $16 million, I go, that's not a lot. But then when you calculate it based on the purchasing power, compare it to today, it's a shit ton of money in 1935. And I found that very interesting. (laughs) I'm moving on now. I'm going to be boisterous. I'm going to be silly. That's what I do when my ears are naked. I'm just off the wall. I bounce off the walls when my ears are naked. And you can't stop me. You can't blame me either. Uh, Moving on. 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 Do-do-do-do-do-do-do. I assume this is okay. Yeah, I do believe it is. I do believe it is. And if it is not, I will be pissed off. But I think it's okay. Okay? I'm just talking about the sound. I'm paranoid since I lost sound the other day. But it is okay. And I just have to have some faith and move on without being preoccupied with that. Okay. What's next? Oh, I know what's next. I have a little new segment that I like to call True Stories. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. And today's true story has something to do with um, driving as a youngster, okay? I've long been of the opinion, I never would have thought this when I was a teenager, that kids under 18 years old should not be allowed to have driver's licenses because they don't have the intellectual and emotional maturity to appreciate the serious responsibility that it is. I'm not joking when I say that, okay? I was a little jackass. When I was 16, if I had said that to myself, I would have said, Fuck you, older Paul. How fucking dare you? <laughs> Fuck you, older Paul. Uh, so, yeah, so I um, was a wild-ass fucking driver when I was younger. It was a horrible, horrible thing that my parents let me get my driver's license when I was 16 years old. I was not emotionally responsible. The first month that I got my driver's license, I was pulled over 15 times within 30 days. That's not a joke. And I did not get a ticket for any of those instances being pulled over until the very end of the month when I got into a car accident. And that's the appropriate sound. I was pulling out of a parallel parking spot and I bumped into a girl and it smashed in the side of her car. No one was hurt or anything like that. But after my first month, I got into a car accident. But that's not the problem. It wasn't just that I was like a careless driver. My, I had a, a handful of friends when I was younger, a couple of whom we basically had like a competition to see who could be crazier. And and so often we would try to up one another and uh, on the crazy shit we would do. One of the things I would do was I would see a parked car and I would have a whole group of kids with me. We're going to lunch for at school or something. And I, I had this gnarly fucking tank of a 1977 jeep wagoneer and if you don't know what those are they're just an ugly tank it was horrible but a good car for an irresponsible learner to um learn to drive in and so i would i would take this car and i would gun it with a group of kids in the car with me i would gun it at a parked car and turn away at the very last second before smashing into the car other crazy shit I did was, like in the winter when there were tall snow drifts in a parking lot, like after it snows, they pile them up into one pile. 
I would just take this tank and go like 30, 40, 50 miles an hour and go boom, smashing through these snow drifts. That shit was crazy. Another thing I would do was I, <laughs> oh fuck, this is funny because I used to drive up on people's lawns and smash snowmen. And I recall one time doing that and when I smashed into the snowman, the head of the snowman like got decapitated and tumbled onto the front of the car. That shit was really funny. Um, and uh, so, yeah, wild, crazy ass motherfucking driving. One of the worst things I did and I didn't get in trouble for it was amazing. One night I was out late with friends, probably like 10 or 11, and we were at a party drinking. And I probably, I seem to recall having like four beers and we were driving on this road here east in Thornton near North Glen where I live. And it's a 35 mile zone and I was driving a hundred fucking miles an hour. Oh my God. And I got pulled over by a police officer. And, um, and for some reason, I, I just can't fucking fathom that I was driving a hundred miles an hour. I got pulled over and... He, he basically recognized that I was freaked out, that I was in trouble, and he let me go home. He just said, okay, you just got to drive home right now. So having been drinking and having been going 100 fucking miles an hour, he actually just let me go and drive home. I, and I honestly think that when I look back on that, I, I was lucky, but at the same time, I wasn't learning an important lesson that I should have learned. When I was 18, I had a new truck. It was a 1991 Toyota Toyota uh, truck with an extra cab. It was pre-Tacoma, and that's what it was. It was a four-cylinder. It was so weak-ass. You drive to fucking Vegas, and there are inclines on the road where, like, you can't get above 40 miles an hour in this weak-ass car. But it was a new car, and it was pretty nice, and uh, it was pretty cool to have as a youngster. I was into Back to, Fu Back to the Future, so that's what I wanted. But anyway... Within a year of getting that, I, I got into an accident and hurt the car pretty badly. And then I came to find out like a week or two after getting in the accident that my insurance dropped me and that I would have to go to high risk insurance. And this is not a joke. This is real. To insure my car, which my dad was paying, we, we, it had full coverage on it originally. To insure it, with full coverage, they wanted $2,500 every six months. Now, to put that into perspective, right now, my rates are much more normal because of my age and stage, I guess, and because I haven't gotten in serious trouble for an extremely long time. I paid 400 bucks for six months yesterday, and it was uh, full coverage. And so what we had to do at that time, and mind you, my dad was so fucking pissed off at me, it was unfucking believable I kid you not. He was so pissed off. It He got me on high-risk insurance, but he had to drop uh, liability. Or no, he, we only had liability. There was no co collision coverage. Like, the car would not be paid for if I wrecked the car. So we had to take off um, all, all sorts of the uh, full coverage in order to be covered. And then that was still 1200 bucks a month. Or, uh, no, every six months, excuse me. But, um, so... That's, those are all my true stories for the day, people. Did you like that? True stories. PZ's true stories. You know it. <laughs> right. So that's my new little bit there. I, I sat up making that last night. I, I was in the middle of re-watching a TV show called um, The Young Pope with Jude Law playing a pope. Uh, a young guy who became the Pope, and he named himself Pope Pius the Thirteenth. Extraordinary show, and I love that show. And this is my third time watching it, and uh, it's extraordinary. I really love, I really love the way they wrote that character. Kind of diabolical, kind of mean, but definitely in the story has some real tie to God, and it's implied in the story that God is real, sort of, and that he can kind of. And it's very subtle. It's not like overt. I'm communicating with God and he's doing things. Like he gets on his knees and prays fiercely and God listens to him sometimes. And it's a very sexual show and it's very edgy. And I don't take it much as um, a lot of shows out there these days will be made to mock Christianity. 
but I didn't get that from this show. It's it's got some aspects of wokeism in it, but it's not wokeism is not driving it. I don't think so. That's very interesting. That show, the second season they did of it, which was named the New Pope, who subsequently followed him. It wasn't as good, but the first season is very good, and I do recommend that. What do I have on my list coming up next? Would you tell me? True story. Oh, speaking of Catholic priests, my mom told me that there's this this uh, priest at her church where I attend with them. I sit there with them, but I don't really take part in all of it. Um, there's a church, or there's a priest there who is going to Vegas to play the video poker machine games, and it was very funny. He he said that he doesn't wear his priest outfit, like the collar and stuff, because people will actually come up to him and ask him to. <laughs> This makes me laugh. It made me laugh when my mom told me. They will ask him to bless the machine that they're playing so that they'll win. And he's like, ah, no, no, I can't do that. That's inappropriate. <laughs> Could you imagine, though? Excuse me, Father, would you bless this uh, machine of sin that I am playing so that I might win something from it? I'm owed. I'm owed, Father. Please ask God to help me win as I throw money away to this big evil place instead of like giving it away generously to those in need. I am the one in need, Lord. I've spent all my money in the casino. Won't you help me, please? All right. Uh, I'm using that smash a lot today. Chill out, bro. <laughs> uh, very good mood right now. Uh, despite being tired and despite having a few personal problems, I I'm not doing too badly. Uh, I'm going to, oh, how far am I in 21 minutes? That's not too bad. I, I was, I'm pretty generally happy with that intro that I just did. We're going to do our favorite part of the show. Boom. Uh, no, I go a beep, a bop, and a boop. Yeah. Uh-oh. Rise, baby. The new rise. Father Almighty, will you please bless this gambling machine for me so that I might win. Oh, I have this hypnotic light flashing on my other phone here, and it's like, ah, 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 ah. Will you please bless this machine so that I might win, Lord? I want to win. I want to hear it go like, ting, 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 boom. Oh, my timing was off on that, but that's okay. We're blessing the machine that sins. We're blessing the sin machine today. Don't you like that? Don't you like a priest who refuses to bless uh, a slot machine? Good for him. A, he wouldn't bless the poker machine. I believe that's the right thing to do. Very good, Father, what's your name? I don't know your name. Good. Good for you. Hey, let's get those screenshots in, shall we? <laughs> All right, and back on with the lights. And now we are ready for the main part of the show. Uh, as soon as I clear this out of here. All right, close out of that, and welcome to Copy Who, everyone. <laughs> I spent time before the show today adjusting the cameras and the exposure in hopes of getting a little better image. I was noticing that the two didn't quite match up when I switched back and forth to them, but look at them now. Beauty. Uh, I think they both look okay. Um I felt like the things I was putting up on the screen on the last show were too bright looking. So I lowered the brightness on the TV and I lowered the um, exposure uh, on the camera just a smidge in hopes that they won't be all like white colored. I want a little more realistic color. Eventually I want to figure out how to get that looking a little better. Where are we now as far as what we want to do for the show today? Okay. Um, right. So uh, here is something I brought up because... So this is a clip of Jamie Kennedy talking to some woman named Emily Wilson. And I had some strong feelings when I was watching it because I was agreeing with some of what she says. But then I was like all struck like, whoa, she's like a super snob. And I'm, I'm a little um, bewildered that Jamie's not calling her out on any of that. But let's hear what she has to say about being... The title of this video is What is a Trad Wife with Emily Wilson? That's the woman's name. Let's go here. So let me ask you this. Um, well, you did. You, I just watched one you said, and you basically had a whole opinion of stay-at-home girlfriends. Yeah. 
So are you married? Uh, no, I have a boyfriend. You have a boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> are you a stay-at-home girlfriend? Yeah, I guess technically. So d- explain to That's people okay. what that is. I, I mean, it's a not, man even, takes a, care I'm not even a stay-at-home. Well, because we don't live no, together. No, you do your own thing. Yeah, yeah okay, gonna, so you're not. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm technically... You're not I, at all. Uh, but you basically, love, I can't wait to be. Can I just say this to you? So yeah. you, sa- <laughs> you said um, to all these girls coming for me, you basically... Uh, I floss, therefore I am. Um, correct me, but you basically said you're mad at me and my opinion of a stay-at-home girlfriend. It's like you're basically not hot enough. To be a stay-at-home girl. <laughs> Would you say that's kind of what you said? Which video? You said about stay-at-home. She, so many. Is she denying? You you basically, stay-at-home girl. Don't oh, come for us. Does she that, just oh. say rubbish and not mean it and then forget what she said? What's going on? It's Don't like, come for us. Yeah, I was talking about the liberal media outlets because now they're talking badly about trad wives and trad girlfriends. What's what that? They, <laughs> they call it trad wife. Trag? Traditional wife. Oh, trad. So, and they're, and that, Yeah. Tra- Are you just now putting the pieces together? Chill. Yes, Jamie, trad chill. wife. Did you think, I? that's the thing, at first I what? thought it was like some weird thing I didn't understand. So she is a foxy lady. Can we take a look at her really quick? And, and I sort of like how she says, oh, she's not the hottest, but she goes on to say some things that really, so let's come in. I, I notice that when I zoom in on stuff, I don't stay there long enough to get the full view of what I'm saying. So there she is right there. She's a beauty, no doubt about it. I had no idea. I know, I've ne- I never heard that term until right now. Yeah. Trad wife. So trad wife, trad girlfriend, which is just a traditional stay-at-home. Yeah, wife, nothing wrong with that. If you have children, yeah. This you part can do of that. what she's mm-hmm. saying, I agree with. In the care of government and God knows whoever else. And mm-hmm. I was just saying, like, of course, the left-wing media is like, go, like, saying how disgusting it is. Of course. Like, what do you mean? This is what we've done for all of history, and let's yes. be real. Mm-hmm. It's upside I, down now. Left. I have a lot of left. friends out here. I've lived out here. The left-hand way, sinestra. In Italian, means left, and you know what? It's not coincidental that you hear the word sinister in sinestra. No, since I was like seventeen. Mm-hmm. All my <clears throat> girlfriends are gorgeous. I don't hang out with anyone there really less attractive than me. Uh, so just- that that right there rubs me wrong. I want to hear more why you say you don't hang out with women who are less attractive. Like you, you make a definite effort. To not hang out with women because they're not as attractive as you, and that that's all of a sudden rubbing me wrong. Like it sounds very pompous. It sounds very much like you think you're hot shit, and you are beautiful. I'm not disputing you have a beautiful physical vis- vision about you. I like what you said already about traditional wives, uh, traditional trad wives staying home wives. There's no wives. It's wives. Plural of wife is wives. And yes, I did fuck my grammar up there. You just have to live with that sometimes. I'm not perfect. Sometimes I make those mistakes. Can we carry on, please? Drama. But they all agree. What would the drama be before you go to the next part? It's just like all the girls I've ever been friends with that are less attractive than me. It's always a jealousy thing. It's an atten- attention thing. I don't know. They're really shady. Like, I mean, they'll try to like sleep with your boyfriend. It's just the worst. There's something shallow about be, what you're like, saying. Angels. It rings shallow. But I like, mo- all my girlfriends are way hotter than me. They're stunning. Mm-hmm. I love being around beautiful women. See, I now there's modesty in that. You- so um, to me, it's immodest to be like, I won't hang out with anyone who's not as hot as me. And then like, and then it's humble to say that you're the least attractive of your lady friends, but there's some insecurity in that. Like, I think it has more to do with the character of the people you're hanging out with who want to try and screw your boyfriends than it does with um, <clears throat> the fact that they're not as hot as you, so they're jealous. It's weird how you're projecting that insecurity or jealousy on them. Value just by being beautiful. I love being around pretty things, pretty people. Who doesn't? Um, I don't know. A lot of maybe I do. people see that differently. I love it. Me and but my big ears. It's like they were like coming Me and my tr- big fucking ears. We fucking love hanging out with pretty people. I feel like Dumbo today because I'm not used to seeing my ears on here. <laughs> I don't know what to. Will I get used to this eventually? I don't know. Traditional women for doing mm-hmm. like a loving traditional thing. And I think it's like so funny. And I was like, let's be real. Who's sitting at New York Times and Huffington Post writing these articles? hideous liberal women and it's like mm-hmm. you're just mad because no man wants but you, you you're speaking about hideous liberal women and so then i am back in the boat of like um 
identifying with you, but it sounds very pompous the way you're articulating that, and it makes me very uncomfortable. It's like you're the flip side of superficial on the right, and you know, incidentally, I had a friend point out to me who's been watching these some of these videos I'm doing say that I'm more like conservative than he realized, and and I pointed out to him that. <clears throat> It's a case-by-case, case, individual basis. What we're talking about determines where I am on it. Like, what's the issue? Then I feel this way about that issue when I analyze that issue. I am not definitively one political side or the other political side. I have a habit of being very critical of both sides. But it is true that in the last 10 years, I have leaned more right. But I also know that certain opinions I have will be labeled by left leftists as alt-right or far-right just because I disagree with something. And sometimes I have certain very liberal attitudes, especially socially liberal attitudes, where people on the right will cringe from what I uh, am supportive of. So there's really no—you have to juggle what I am at a given moment. And and I, this is the zero-sum proposition of living in the United States, people, and I'm personally very tired of that. Like, you can't just— sort of be an ind that's why I consider myself an independent. But you still get the labels. You still get the harsh labels. When when you have an independent opinion that doesn't conform exclusively either to the left or the right, there's always someone in those two groups who's going to be judging you on some level. And that's always making me feel very uncomfortable. And be a hot girlfriend and like you're not in Mykonos right now, are you? And it's like, I'm sorry, but like it's true. People can argue, but it's true. So you're saying that the women, if it's women writing these women, articles, yeah, you just, it's probably you're saying they're sh women. they're shrews, <laughs> shrews, and they're not getting that chance. Now, do you think by I mean, pretty wait, women hold are on, never mean to me. hey Siri, what's the definition of shrew? Shrew means a small insectivorous mammal resembling a mouse. With a long pointed snout and tiny eyes. What? Do you want to hear the remaining one? Yes. What's the other definition? It means a bad tempered or aggressively assertive woman. Okay. <laughs> That's, yeah. All right. Shrew. I'm going to use that word from now on. Uh, aren't you glad we looked up the definition of shrew? Now we know the definition of through a mean tempered woman. <laughs> hey, shrew. Don't be a shrew. Bitch. <laughs> Pretty women. No, all the girls that follow me and support me and love me are like all really hot, and they're usually like really hot stay-at-home girlfriends. And, and they're really good character because they don't like cheat on you because they're hotter than you are. Which so they would never cheat with your boyfriend, right? Because they're hotter than you are. That logic doesn't make sense to me. Two comments on that. Yeah. A, there's a physical prettiness with people, mm -hmm. but then of course. there's a prettiness of soul and spirit. Yeah. Yeah. So if and isn't it nice to get the one easy on the eyes who has the built-in character? That's what I'm saying. It's attractive in your eyes physically, but they have a beautiful soul. Do they get a point? Of course. Okay. Same with guys. You can be the hottest guy ever. But I won't hang out with you if you're less attractive than I am, ladies, because you'll try to steal my boyfriend. That's the message you delivered earlier. Awful. I'm going to look at you kind of like you're ugly. Mm -hmm. Looks. I mean, yeah, and looks fade as well. The but difference of is these they women do. coming for me are awful, miserable, and unattractive. And I'm like, so what's going on here? Do you think that this opinion, which is very strong mm -hmm. and very, you're steadfast on it, is ingratiating you to those people? What do you mean? Are, hmm. they, is it making them <clears throat> like you more? What people? The liberal shrews. Oh, no, but I don't <laughs> care. You don't care? No. I don't care what... I don't even get what they're talking about. Me. I want to back out of this right now because I'm short on time. I heard what she had to say, and I made the comments I wanted to make. And so back over here with all of this. Thank you, Jamie Kennedy, and thank you, whatever your name was, lady. I will make notes uh, of what your name is in the description. Beautiful woman, but I just I feel there's some kind of inconsistency with her character there. Am I wrong? Um, so one minute, 30 seconds into this clip is where I want to go. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, that's about where we are right here. And I'll take you over here. This is Paul, or yeah, Paul Bauer continuing his discussion from a year ago with Rollo Tomasi. And here Rollo is using his old microphone. And in his old studio setup, he's revamped everything. It sounds better now. I think it looks better now, too. But let's continue with what they're saying here. I don't even recall what they were saying. WTF were they saying? I cut off in the middle of it because the other show ran out of time. Somebody like uh, Joker from... Uh, yeah, that, and again, that I don't, mic does not sound good. That mic sounds way too hot. I think it's Joker, but I see these guys who come into and they, they have this like really high instant success and then they kind of level off. I go, they didn't... They're not in this. They're not in the manosphere of the red pill for the same reasons that I've been doing this for 20 some odd years. And they're happy to use my material. And I'm okay with what that. What is even. the different reason? I'm actually reason, okay though. with people like, you know, using my material to, you know, to spread the, you know, the message kind of thing, I guess, um, because I've always considered the red pill open source. Sure, so, sure. because, and again, ah. I, <laughs> you know, why I'm responding like that is because I've had some discussions with close associates and friends and family of mine about Rulo Tomasi. And the consensus is that Rolo, even though notwithstanding, let's go back and hear what he said there. Um, my material to, you know, to spread the, you know, the message kind of thing, I guess, um, because I've always considered the red pill open source. Sure. So, because, and again, I want to still have those conversations. And again, if people think I'm full See, of shit, then so, I want to So what that. I'm getting at here with my objecting tone is, I get a lot from Rolo in the way that he wants all this credit. And so on one hand there, he acknowledged like the ideas are good. He wants the ideas out there. But I've also felt a lot of ego from him where he like really wants credit for these things that I think are his brilliant way that he repackaged ideas and concepts that already existed to appeal to it. He, he recognized a group out there that kind of had a need. He compiled a lot of information and he sort of made it hip and fashionable with the way he introduced it to the world. And he, inv he invented basically a whole genre unto himself in sort of a new era, a new time, like especially coming on YouTube and doing this little uh, pretty big show that he has. I shouldn't say little. It sounds to, like I'm wanting to diminish him when I say that. I'm not. And I'm not also diminishing the quality of his, his ideas. I'm just saying that what catches me about this is I feel after seeing Rolo for countless hours on his show every week that there's an egotistical guy here. Understandably, he's built something. And um, and it's not all about the idea. I, I, I do believe he's sincere that he wants men to help themselves. He wants to help men help themselves. I believe that's sincere and that's real. But I also believe there's a, a man here with an ego and undoubtedly so am I. I have a big ego myself in my own ways. I toot my own horn all the time. I'm self-aggrandizing, self-centered, whatever. Rolo wants credit for the manosphere. But but here's another thing I was just saying to my cousin the other day. I think it was both of us. I can't remember. My cousin might have said it. Rolo, you do not own the manosphere, and you're not in charge of the evolution of this thing. So any fucking beast that is given birth in the world can involve, evolve, it can evolve into God knows what. So that's what I want to say about that. Let's continue to listen to what he's saying here. And I might even be deviating from what the discussion is here, but it's how it strikes me um, based upon how there's some inconsistency between Rolo's humility here, saying he's wanting the, the concepts to be open source, but there's also the man here who wants credit for the concepts. I understand you want credit for the concepts, I'm just pointing out that there are those that's there's that kind of duality here, I think. Conversation about whatever that topic is. So when people say, Oh, you you won't debate me, it's like I don't owe you a debate, first of all. And second of all, uh, uh -oh. if you know anything Easy about Ego Meister. It's okay, Rollo. I got you, bro. Does that feel good when I stroke your head like that? That's what I want to do from now on. Just like he's a little grouchy. He's a little bit grouchy. <laughs> and, oh, yeah, I know. I'm a douche nozzle, Rolo. Formal debate. Uh, what's the topic? They never have a topic. They, that's a generalization. Some people will. I, 
hey, I'm a nobody. Are you willing to debate me? I will come up with a topic. We can debate a topic. We can prepare to debate the topic. And I don't know uh, what there is to debate about since we're in agreement about a lot of these concepts in general. <laughs> so, but I will debate you, okay? Uh, I'll debate you about priests blessing gambling machines, slot machines, poker machines. I'll, uh, let's debate about that. I will take... Uh, I will take the argument in favor of blessing <laughs> right now. Okay, I will take the argument in favor of blessing the gambling machine, Rolo. And the reason the priest should bless the gambling machine so that people win is because they can take a little bit of that money back from the evil that has been programmed to take it away from them. God, if you are there, uh, please intervene and let these people win their money back and let them come o- like like let them have a a watershed moment where they stop gambling in these machines. I'm taking the the argument for blessing the machine. God should just uh, be like, no, don't do that at all, okay? I don't know uh, in the Ten Commandments or biblical scriptural law that says you shouldn't gamble. Anyway, I'm totally going off the track here. But people, I think priests should bless the machine if it means that the machine will give the money back from the evil takers— But then when the people win the money, they get that big rush, and then they start gambling again. So it's such a double-edged sword. Uh, And so this is my methodology for debating. You just pick a side, and you you have a good—a strong mind is someone who can pick either side and make a cognizant argument for either side. That's why some lawyers are such good lawyers. It also is— is it also distinguishes distinguishes a super evil person, because sometimes you know one side is right— the other side is wrong, but you can still take the wrong side and make arguments for it if you're an intelligent person, an intelligent manipulator. I see it all the time. Parasite USA. Never, there's never, oh, well, hypergamy is not what you say it is. Great, let's have that show. I'll be, let's line it up. I'll set it up right now. Uh-huh. Okay. But if it's, Rollo, you're a cult leader and you're a grifter, that's right. not a debate, okay. man. That's just, yeah, I agree. Opinion. It's just like calling people names. And, and I agree. I agree with what he's doing, but I'm doing a lot of shtick over this, and hopefully in the midst of doing shtick, I'm saying some things that are halfway comprehensible and making some kind of interesting point about something and being silly and saying, look at that smile on your face. Coochie, coochie, coo. Coochie, coo. Coochie, coo. He's like this. Looking like I want to get that screenshot. I guess if I really want to look super dork, I put these on and go like so and go. And I don't have the headphones. Damn. All right. <laughs> Enough of that shit. Back here. <laughs> and so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have those discussions with people who are disingenuous to begin with. Now, am I saying that Corey Wayne is disingenuous? I am genuine. No, obviously I, not. Is there um, okay? However, wait. I will. Is there a word genuous? Disingenuous. I understand the word just. It means since I guess sincere would be the opposite of disingenuous. Never mind. I'm just doing another grammatic exercise here. Hey Siri, what's the opposite of disingenuous? Antonyms for disingenuous include ingenuous and frank. Okay, genuous. There is a word genuous. Oh, ingenuous, not j- disingenuous. It's ingenuous. See, I'm learning shit here today. I might as well take this opportunity to learn. Get instance by instance. And when I did the last show and I had, uh, I think I used a clip of his where he's talking to two, two chicks that are getting into, um, you know, uh, give a, pretty much a lot of the stuff that MGTOWs are talking about. And he's just sitting there kind of nodding his head. Yeah, I'm going to have a problem with that. I'm going to call you out on yeah. that. I would call I, um, head out on for something like that too. I, I don't. I, I don't want to talk special. shit. I don't want to talk shit about Corey because yeah, still let trying. let him talk a little, Rolo. You are like doing all the talking, and you're not letting Paul get any word in edgewise. It's not all about you, Rolo. And you're not Italian either. Up uh, boom on my podcast. But one thing that I've noticed with those episodes. Um, is that in his book, he talks about not getting advice about women from women. Mm-hmm. And then, and now he's, he's having lots of podcasts where he's got two women where he's asking them for advice, their opinions on stuff. <laughs> and I'm just like, that's kind of a, 
Doesn't Hypocritical. Make sense, but well, not talking shit. Corey. Listen, it's double standard. Uh, I, I I hear exactly what he's saying, but ratings are ratings. Like that's the whole fucking Access Vegas form formula. That's the fresh and fit formula. That's the whatever formula is. Okay, yeah, don't ask advice of women, but you put them on display like a fucking. It's a freak show at a circus because they're so whack these days. Of course, you're gonna do that with women. Put them on display, and I'm sure they're not all bad. But the problem I see with these podcasts is. Um, it's a rarity that they get the kind of woman on that I want to hear about um, sensible things from a sensible woman. They're usually getting on the sensational women, um, OF fans, like only fans. No, they're OF is what you call it. OF girls, only fans. I'm getting the lingo down. I'm staying hip. I'm staying young. I'm staying contemporary. Oh, Lord, help me. Yeah, I know I'm annoying, but don't block me. <laughs> I have some shit to say. Oh, come on my show, man. Come well, on. it's um, <laughs> like getting female dating advice. Like you will never see that happen on my show. Okay. That was pretty good. Hi. Oh, Coach hi. Corey Wayne. What? This Corey Wayne. Video okay. coaching That's newsletter. the guy you're talking about. And he's a little, hold on. It's, he's a little nerdy. Just a little nerdy. Topic of today's I thought at first to... he was called Carl Deichler from the Beachbody company, but he's not. He... The red yeah. pill made my life. I mean, work. okay. My immediate impression is dorky. I mean, I've heard him say some wise things. This fellow Corey Wayne, but um, it, it, it I do get dorky vibes off of him. I don't feel like I have dorky vibes, but then I'm like, oh my god, look at my ears, and I'm like, dorky vibes, insecurity. God help me. What is up next? We have something, one more thing I will uh, bring up, and it'll probably eat up the rest of the time here. And it is, uh, oh my goodness. They're my favorites. You know who they are? They're the. Da -da 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 -da. It's the TRT Bros on with, um, I don't know who, what show this is, though. Valuetainment. I think that network, Valuetainment, is the same one that does. Uh, What's her name? Jedediah? I think I may be mistaken about that, but I think. I, I, I don't see where does it say. See, this annoys me. They never put proper descriptions on here. They cut and paste a bunch of shit and they don't even explain the clip. Is that what I should be doing is just not explaining clips? There are people that have been attacking the red pill. Mm -hmm. Sneeko's been attacking him. Destiny's been attacking it a little bit. Um, Who gives a fuck about Avin Destiny? Preach, you said that you're Destiny is a dumbass. So why is it Destiny... Um, why is Destiny one of the personalities taking off in this space right now? What is it about him? He's got a hot lady he's with. Would I take off all of a sudden if I had some hot lady by my side? I'm trying to find one of those, by the way. Uh, I have some in mind that I'm seeing on a regular basis, and I'm kind of thinking to mention this idea to them that they should come sit across from me here and um, be the one laughing at my jokes, giving the woman's perspective, but I don't want a ding-dong here with me. But I do want her to be easy on the eyes, and I'm not going to have anyone here who uh, can't stomach moi. Ego, I know. I'm going on about me again. Forgive me. Pill adjacent. That's not exactly attack. Even Tate has said some stuff about it. Mm. I think we have a clip of what Tate has said. So I want to. I want you to kind of break this down. Mm. And then I also want to talk about the transcendency okay. of Tate. Just Stop about beating around the bush. Being a man in general. Get what to the meat and potatoes, bro. 20 years of, of this. Mm -hmm. Um, you've seen, you know, when it started with the game, let's say, with your book, The Rational Male, when mystery was a thing, mm -hmm. when Kevin Samuel was a thing. I mean, Tim's taking the whole I idea. My God. Um, he brought up mystery, and I recall years ago, I used to follow mystery on, I think he might have added me as a friend on my old profile on Facebook, and mystery was in such a... Um, distressed emotional state and I, I was like this is the same guy that was on that tv show like he was so distressed and just blurting it out there it was very revealing he couldn't he couldn't handle it. i actually hope he's okay because it was pretty bad at the time he would carry on about wanting to kill himself and stuff anyway carry on you carry on trt bros you're in all white this is like overexposed on my tv bro i'm sounding like paul uh oh paulie shore and, and Rollo has a full head of hair, and he always wears a beanie. Let me tell you something, Rollo. While you have the hair, Mr. Tomasi, 
Why? Why do you wear a beanie if you have the hair? I, and I'm sincere about that. Be, and this is actually just pointing out my own insecurity about not having hair. If you have hair, flaunt it. Why would you do that? And, um, oh, just wait, watch this. Um, the manosphere at a whole nother level. So we'll touch on that. But let's watch this clip and let you weigh it. What? Andrew Tate. You are out here only trying to have so women have no emotional connection. They're weirdos. A lot of this red pill, how to get girls stuff, a lot of them are like that as well. They're like, the, the peak masculine uh, uh, life is just to have a bunch of women that you barely know, and that, that's yeah. stupid. That's fucking ridiculous, right? Mm. Every man, if you want to have a good life, you need to have a good relationship with a good woman. When yeah. you get sick, it's your woman who's going to care, not your boys, right? But you can love her, and she can love you with all her heart. You can love each other. You can be prepared to take a bullet for her. Yeah. And still fuck other bitches. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's you know what I'm saying? that's <laughs> where the fucking wisdom goes right off the... So he says this very wise statement where you're like, yeah, I agree. I, and then you're like, whoa! Hey, and so it's like off-putting to someone who has more of a monogamous mentality like me. I'm like, what do you... Fuck other bitches! <laughs> it's contrary to loving someone to just... To have that attitude at the end of what you just said. I, I love her. I I'm committed to her. She takes care of me when I'm sick. And I, I keep her there. And I still fuck other bitches. Come on, Andrew. I, I, I disagree with what he said there. It's like wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Drop the ball. Fumble. Yeah. You got to do it. That's him with what his wife, by the way. His life. I think you're going to agree with my answer. It is which red pill guy do you think is the biggest dork, et cetera, et cetera. They ah, are all talking damn about you. Me. It's et cetera, et cetera. It's Latin. Two words, E-T space, C-E-T-E-R-A, cetera, et cetera, not et cetera. I'm always like critical for people. I grew up in an abusive, in an abusive household where my dad studied Latin. Can you imagine? You don't get away with et cetera in our house. It's et cetera, E-T space, C-E-T-E-R-A. Et cetera, et cetera, et, 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 tu brute, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Got it? There's your lesson, Andrew Tate's brother. I forgot what his brother's name is. Now, all the ones who've criticized me, all the ones who've criticized Andrew, and they're talking about me and making videos about me, despite begging to be in my organizations, begging to be on my podcast, I'm not begging, begging you. me to be I'm, on their It's not that I have anything against you. Because me and Andrew it's are your, now... It's etc. that I have relevant. against you. That's it. I otherwise like these guys. Uh, but, I mean, even Andrew just says something smart and then totally drops the ball at the end. They could ever dream of being. I'm not going to say any of their names, because that's exactly what they want when they try to bait me by making stupid videos. They want me to sit here and be like, well, this guy said... I don't right. care. Guys, I can't say that I was... All right, cool. Um, so when you hear this, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you have a lot are, of... I hate, are... I hate the sound of their audio. I don't know how it'll sound when I play back. But there's too much echo, and there's this fucking fan blowing in the background. Like, I'm hearing the sound of a computer fan or some kind of fan. And <laughs> you hear how pristine and quiet my room is right now? Listen. Do you hear any fan like that? There's all this fucking studio foam everywhere. It's just beautiful sounding. I, 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 wanna, I want you guys to go all the way. So I love the visual here, by the way, with the city in the background. And, um, and, and I don't like the mic stands either. Those could be better. And all the fucking winding of the cords around that. that there's something about that that bothers me because it looks too busy. But anyway, I'm getting too producer-y. I want to keep watching this. Actually, older videos. Yeah, I know. Yeah. This is not exactly. He didn't shoot this video yeah. yesterday to, in, 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 in uh, honor of this episode. But these are things mm -hmm. that he said that Tristan have said. Sneeko's starting to say Tristan. these things. Tristan, that's. I name. think one can argue there's so many benefits of understanding. You know, red pill. You've said it. You've described Under it as the dynamics. truth mm -hmm. and understanding how men and women operate. But when you even see these types of uh, comments mm -hmm. or what Sneeko's saying these days or what Destiny has to say, you know, I guess how bulletproof. Mm -hmm. is the red pill ideology or what you call praxeology. praxeology. What are your thoughts on these types of comments? Well, okay, so ah, these kinds of things go What you cycles. call ideology, and, and Rollo is always saying, ideology is not praxeology. They couldn't be more different from one another. And <laughs> look, Mike, Michael Sartain, where is his mind at right there? What are you thinking about, Michael? He's like, uh, Rollo's getting all the attention again. You're not as big as Rollo Tomasi. Let me um, let me do you a favor here. Oh uh, no, I can't right now. 
I was going to stroke your head, but you're too far away from me right there. I can go like this. I can pat you on the head a little like that. It's okay, Michael. Michael Sartain, you're not Rolo. It's going to be okay. During 2016 election cycle, everybody who wanted oh, some sort of another relevancy. another thing I want to point out. <laughs> not even about the discussion. I, I think your pants are too short, Rolo. Look how much they come up on his ankles. No socks. That's a no-no. There's something wrong with a man who doesn't wear socks. I don't care how much fucking testosterone you jab into your arm gratuitously. TRT, bros. Ah! But why? Why show so much of your legs? That's a red flag. That's a red flag, bro. I'm going too far. There are only a few minutes left, so I'm like, get in my hits. Get in the boisterous. Give them their black eyes. In a political sense, they were called the alt-right, but the alt-right wanted to be red pill. So if you look at Candace Owens and you go and you look at her uh, her uh, Twitter profile from back in 2015, 2016, she was called red pill black. Yep. Now she's no longer that. She's Candace. Michael just but, agrees um, the whole time. Nod. Back in the day, yeah. it was, let's just say, brand-wise, it was expedient for her to use yeah, that. Yeah, so I think that's what you mean when people are grifting, and then they quickly abandon it. And I know... Um, what I think is is that Ryan Stone is that kind of grifter. I've heard him say as much on his show that like he can't he wants his channel to take off so he can leave like the red pill shit behind. And so it's like people use it as a stepping stone. It's somewhat like what I'm doing here, but I genuinely enjoy the topic. But I still have this attitude I want to talk about anything I want to talk about. But so Candace Owens did that. I, I hear you and um what are you going to do? People use it as a stepping stone to bigger and better things. Well, why not? All they do when you're making YouTube content is they're like, to get a foothold, they tell you, find a niche, a tiny little thing. I'm like, fuck that. Uh, I want to be like the whole wide palette. Enjoy myself. And it may, maybe it hurts me, but that's partly, it's not all grift, even though I say I, I jokingly grift. Anything you're talking about is some kind of grift on some level. If I'm talking about fucking um, Nikki Six from Motley Crue, it's like I'm trying to garner the interest of people who are into that music group and demonstrate my knowledge with that. Anything I'm talking about, like the, um, I'm just trying to have interesting intellectual conversations. I'm trying to be silly. So, but how do you take off? If you're Candace Owens, you take off being Red Pill Woman or whatever you said she was. It's not that big a deal. But you're making a valid point. People, It's basically like it's not taking advantage of the manosphere or anything. And I know you didn't say that per se, but um, it's finding something that connects with an audience and using that, developing to get further, growing, going down a path somewhere. There are a lot of other people who are using the same thing, who are doing the same thing. So a lot of people will come into this space and they're not about the red pill praxeology, but they do realize that the manosphere, the red pill, whatever we're calling it, um, is a hot topic. I yeah, mean, the, half of the course. reason why this show is here. That's to, not to the only reason I'm talking about it, though. I genuinely have an interest in it. I read your books because I have a genuine, legitimate interest in it. And I'm 50 years old. I wish I read those books when I was 19. And I'm sorry to keep making it about me, but I'm trying to just reflect my own experience with it. Of Grifting. Like Rolo... You could say that like your everyone's entire career is a grift. You have a personal passion about it, but like um, you do it because you're into the topic. But it's also the same thing started out for you. It's like, well, I'm going to talk about this topic. You studied evolutionary psychology in college, is that correct? And then you move into this, that, and the other thing, and you're entrepreneurial. And so you find what works for you. You find that audience. You connect with that audience little by little over time. It winds up working for you. Look, I'm, I'm met... cutting out on this, uh, but before I do, I just want to pat Rolo on your head one more time. You're a good boy. You're a good man. I like you very much. Do take off the beanie once in a while. I dare you to cut your hair, Rolo. You have it, though. Be grateful you have it, unless it's a wig and it's all part of the act. You guys take the TRT, bros. Take the injection. So, gawk, gawk. I had to end that on a little bit of a silly note. Annoying note. I could see people just writing me off because I behave like that. But whatever. Missing the point here. Little bit of entertainment. Little bit of serious. Makes a nice little blend into one little thing. And on that note, I come over here like this. Woo! We made it through another one. 
Naked ears and all. Look at my ears. I'm like Dumbo. Podcasting Dumbo. I wish I could fly with my ears, though. Big fat ears. I'm getting screenshots right now. If you like the show, I appreciate that. So why don't you actually like the show, share the show, uh, subscribe to the channel, and subscribe also to the Clips channel. I'm starting to get uh, habituated to putting clips up, which is kind of cool. It is Copy Who Clips, at Copy Who Clips is the handle. So everyone, as I always end by saying, and I really mean this, joking aside, peace be with you all.